Hi everyone, I just thought I'd make a quick video to show you how to create a competition through Education Perfect. What we're finding is a lot of our teachers are actually level two with their accreditation, which you can see underneath my name up the top here. And what you need to do to move up to a level three for most teachers is simply create a competition. So competitions are great fun to get your students engaged and um, a little bit of that competitive nature happening between each other. Uh, I used com competitions in my classroom as a revision tool, just a different way to get students interacting with the content on the platform. So in order to create a competition, the first thing we click on is number four, competitions. And here we can see the competition uh, page, obviously. And the first thing I wanna do is create a competition. So I need to give my competition a name. So this is going to be Kelly's test competition and obviously you would give it a name that's going to um, psych your students up a little bit. With the start and end time, a competition can run for as short or as long a period of time as you like. So as you can see, the time has been set for exactly what my clock is right now. So I could be in class and decide I've got 15 minutes left of the lesson and uh, we've got a bit of time to kill. So I could come in and create a competition and get the students really engage with Education Perfect for the last 15 minutes. So I'm going to set the start time for now and I'm going to have the end time be in a month. So as I said, you can make it as short or as long as you like. With the next thing, we need to decide who is going to be involved in the competition. So you can choose to have students within your own school have an inter-school competition where any school can join simply by finding your competition over here on the Find Competitions tab, or you can create an inter-school competition where you can invite specific schools. So that's a lot of fun if you're part of a, a cluster or a network of teachers who are um, wanting to get a little bit of that healthy competition between different schools. So I'm just going to choose my school only because when we do that, we can even take that down all the way to just a single class level. So I'm going to choose my biology classes and then I'm going to save that. So that's chosen two classes and they're going to compete against each other and then the individual students are going to compete as well. The next thing we need to do is decide the content for the competition. So as it says, you can restrict a competition to a whole subject area, a module or individual lessons. So to do that, we select the content so obviously picking a subject will pick all of the content within maths, science, English. So every single year level will be available for the students to, to choose content from to compete. Modules will then take it down to the next level. So for example, if you choose science and then your module would be, for example, stage four. So all of the lessons within stage four science would be chosen and the students would be able to pick content from that. The next level we can take it down to is picking lists, which basically means that we can pick individual lessons. So if I choose science, and I know that I'm setting this for my uh, year 12 and year 11 biology classes, so I'm going to pick stage six science. And then I can come through here and pick the lessons that are relevant to my students. So unfortunately, they are a little bit out of order. So you do sort of just have to uh, have a look through and pick what you want. It can be a little bit tricky to do, but we are in the process of trying to make this a little bit more streamlined. So if you do have some feedback for us, please feel free to get in touch. So let me see if I can find some more biology resources. These all look like physics at the moment. Um, okay, there we go. Oh, trophic levels, perfect and diurnal and nocturnal producers producers and consumers so you sort of get the picture there that you can pick and choose what you like for uh, the individual lessons that will be chosen from the more obviously the more content you choose the less chance you have of the students running out of content during your competition obviously if it's just going to be a short one to begin or to end a lesson then obviously you would only pick a few a few things but the more content there is if you're running a slightly longer competition the better so once we've chosen all the lessons that we want for our competition we save that 
And you can go back in and change that at any time. The next step is number five. Do you want your students to earn points for content they've already learned? So this is something that we're going to leave as default yes, because we want the students to be able to go in and use the resources as revision. So even if they've already learnt that information before, we still want them to engage with that content as a revision tool. During the World Championships, we leave this as default because otherwise students are going to be struggling to find new content to earn points for basically. So the last thing we then need to do is create our competition, check that the details are correct and hit yes. Once that's done that, you will now see that it's appeared underneath my current competitions and I can see the scoreboard that will be created. So this is what the students will see. So you can see the name of the school. Once the students start participating, you'll then have a drop down box that will allow you to break it down to, um, sorry, to classes and to students. You can also see the results page for your school. So the students, you'll be able to see the scoreboard looking at the different students and how many questions they have answered. So if at any time you want to come in and have a look at the scoreboard, you simply navigate back through to competitions and then under my competitions, it is there. You click on the name of the competition and you'll be able to view the scoreboard. Once it's finished, it will then appear under the finished tab. So if at any time you want to go back and have a look at those results, you can click between the two different sections here and look at finished and current. And that brings us to the end of this video. So if you have any questions or you'd like some further clarification on the use of competitions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you.